Today we are going to discuss the research conducted by Durenta and colleagues. This research consists of three studies and is about ovulation, female competition and product choice, hormonal influences on consumer behavior. This is relevant for understanding consumer behavior because even though there has been research conducted to examine behavior of women near ovulation, there hasn't been research conducted to examine the influences of ovulation on product choice. If ovulation has an effect on product choice, this can lead to the development of new ways to approach consumers, for example by using different marketing strategies. The researchers were curious whether hormones could have an influence on the goods that women buy, even if they are not aware of the hormonal state of their bodies. Women tend to buy a class of goods that enhance their appearance, Previous research have found that there are factors that influence shopping behavior of women. They found that women that come from higher socio-economic classes and younger women tend to invest more time in shopping than women from lower socio-economic classes and older women. When women are ovulating, the hormones in their bodies change because conception has to be possible. The ovulatory shift hypothesis states that due to natural selection, psychological processes within women change when they're ovulating. This study examines whether hormones cause product choices to differ among ovulating and non-ovulating women. Previous research suggests that women near ovulation tend to behave differently than when they are not ovulating. When women are ovulating, they are more likely to cheat on their partners than when they are not ovulating, especially when their partner isn't perceived as genetically fit. Women that are ovulating also try to be more social and look more appealing at social events than when they are not ovulating. They might do this to compete against other women or to directly attract men. This leads to four hypotheses in this research. These hypotheses are tested using three different experiments. Hypothesis 1. Women are more likely to choose sexier products rather than less sexy products near ovulation. This hypothesis is being tested in study 1. 60 female participants that reported having regular menstrual cycles and weren't on hormone contraception had to come to the experiment on a high fertility and a low fertility day. To make sure participants were tested on a high fertility day, they had to provide a urine sample to assess whether they were ovulating or not. The participants thought that they had to provide the urine sample to assess their health and had no idea that the samples were actually used to assess ovulation. All participants had to shop on a website that was created for this study. All items were similar in price and did not have an identifiable brand. Items were rated by an independent separate sample as sexy or as less sexy. Some participants could choose from 64 items, whereas the other participants could choose from 128 items. The effects of fertility were the same for both amount of items, so we won't mention them again. To examine whether women want to outperform rifle women, a separate sample completed the shopping task and were asked whether they thought about other women doing the task. They indeed thought about and compared themselves more to attractive than to average looking women during the shopping task. The dependent measure was the percentage of sexy product participants chose. Here you can see how we differentiate between ovulating and non-ovulating women. On the left side you can see sexy clothing and on the right side you can see less sexy clothing. Here you can see that a non-ovulating woman chooses less sexy clothing in comparison to the ovulating woman. So, hypothesis 1 is supported. When women are ovulating, they tend to choose more sexy products than when they're not ovulating. But what is the reason for this effect? Hypothesis 2. Hypothesis 2 is, whilst priming women to compare themselves to attractive females that are considered rivals, ovulation leads women to choose sexier products even more. This hypothesis is tested in study 2. 
48 participants completed the shopping task they also did in study 1. Whether the women were ovulating or not was again tested with a urine sample. However, in this study, prior to the shopping task, these women were primed by looking at photographs to either think about attractive local females, attractive local men, unattractive local females or unattractive local men. These photographs had been rated by a separate sample. Participants that are primed to think about attractive women will more likely compare themselves with the group they have been primed with than participants that were primed to think about the other groups. This was confirmed using another sample as a pretest. In experiment 2, when participants were primed to look at attractive women, you can see that the non ovulating woman chose less sexy products in comparison to the ovulating woman. This is what you can see now. The ovulating woman chose more sexy products and this effect was even stronger for hypothesis 2 than it was for hypothesis 1. I just said that the effect was stronger for hypothesis 1 than it was for hypothesis 2. For hypothesis 1, the effect of fertility was 10%, which means that ovulating women chose 10% more sexy clothing than non-ovulating women. When primed to think about attractive women, as is tested in hypothesis 2, the effect of fertility was 25%. So thinking about attractive women leads ovulating women to choose 25% more sexy products than non-ovulating women. So, hypothesis 2 is supported. Ovulating women that are primed to think about attractive women choose more sexy products. But what about the other groups that the participants were primed with? Hypothesis 3 is, there is not a difference in the choice of products between non-ovulating women and ovulating women when women are primed to compare themselves to unattractive women or men. To test this hypothesis, the same study as hypothesis 2 was used. other priming condition you see an attractive man, an unattractive man, and on the right hand side an unattractive woman. For testing the hypothesis they were primed with an attractive man, with an unattractive man, and lastly with unattractive woman. For all these three priming conditions, there was no difference between ovulating woman and non-ovulating woman in the choice of clothing. Hypothesis 3 was supported. Ovulation had no effect in other priming conditions. But what about when seeing attractive men? And what about distance? For attractive men, it didn't matter for ovulating women or for non-ovulating women because they both chose more sexy clothing. Hypothesis 4 is when women are primed to think about local attractive women that are considered to be direct rivals, ovulation leads women to choose more sexy products. When women are primed to think about distant women, ovulation does not influence the choice of sexy products. This hypothesis is tested in study 3. Again, the same shopping task was completed by 161 participants in this study. This time, women were primed to think about either attractive distant women, attractive local women, unattractive distant women, or unattractive local women. Fertility wasn't assessed using urine samples, like it was in study 1 and 2, but using a counting method. When primed with unattractive and attractive distant woman, and with local attractive and unattractive woman, there was no effect for the distant attractive woman with non-ovulating, and ovulating woman. When primed with the distant unattractive woman, there was also no effect 
for non-ovulating and ovulating women. When primed with the unattractive local woman, there was also no effect between non-ovulating and ovulating woman. However, when primed with local attractive woman, non-ovulating woman chose less sexy clothing compared to ovulating woman who chose more sexy clothing. This could be seen as a battle Hypothesis 4 was supported. Thinking about local women, ovulating women chose more sexy products. Non-ovulating women didn't want to battle at all. An unanticipated finding was that women who weren't ovulating and were primed to think about attractive local women, they chose fewer sexy products compared to non-ovulating women that were in under priming condition. Perhaps these priming conditions makes non-ovulating women less competitive and implies that only ovulating women are willing to battle their rifles. All hypotheses were supported in this study. This study provides evidence that hormonal factors can influence product choice. Previous research already found that women tend to behave differently in their ovulation, for example when going to social events. But now there's also evidence that women in ovulation tend to buy different products. Results show that during ovulation, it is beneficial for women to look more attractive than rivals. Because of this wish to outperform rivals, women tend to choose more sexy products. But women also tend to attract men directly, because both ovulating and non-ovulating women chose more sexy products when looking at attractive men. These findings have implications for the understanding of consumer behavior because it provides evidence that women tend to buy different products near ovulation. Marketers can use this information to change their marketing strate strategies. The evidence that this research provides is also a good source for future research. The research on hormonal influences on consumer behavior is relatively new, so a lot of hormonal influences still have to be examined. It may be possible that other perspectives explain these findings, like for example cultural, social or economic factors, but that would be very unlikely. Another limitation is that there may be, may be other psychological mediators that explain the results, but this has to be tested in future research. Thank you for listening and we wish you good luck with your exams.